A new departure date for Flight 5 was recently revealed, but the FAA appears to be denying it. Is this true or just a result of the FAA's slow update? And after months of delays, ULA is preparing to launch its second Vulcan rocket, a mission critical to the company's future. Meanwhile, a critical Falcon 9 mission is underway, but still waiting for FAA approval to proceed. With so much new news, let's dive into the details of today's NR Studio episode. The launch date for Flight 5 has recently been the subject of controversy. With previous FAA decisions, it looked like we would have to wait nearly two months for the flight. But some surprising new information has just emerged that suggests an earlier launch date. Specifically, the Hazardous Space Operations Advisory for the Gulf of Mexico states that the rocket launch operation is planned near Boca Chica, Texas. The primary date is October 12, 2024, with backup dates listed as October 13th, 18th, October 19th from 7 a.m. to 8.10 a.m. and October 14th to 17th from 7 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. in the morning. This suggests a possible launch window of about a week with October 12th as the primary target. The announcement is generally reliable as the agency rarely issues false alarms for operations at sea. Previous Starship missions have had similar announcements before flights. If true, this would be an encouraging development, especially as preparations for Flight 5 are nearly complete. The OLM systems and tower have been updated and tested. Both rocket stages have completed their upgrades and integration testing has been completed. If the dates are met, SpaceX could begin mantle testing and final system installation on time. This isn't a major incident for SpaceX, but it comes during a somewhat tense period between SpaceX, Musk, and the FAA over last year's fines. It's hard not to speculate that this investigation could take longer than previous ones if the FAA is politically motivated. Let's do a little polling. If you think SpaceX will report soon, comment yes. If you don't, comment no. Regardless, we should be confident that once this is all settled, the FAA probably won't be able to keep SpaceX in the dark much longer. Ahead of the flight, NASA Commercial Equipment Program Director Steve Stitch said his agency had been working closely with SpaceX on recent anomalies on the company's rockets. One involved a Falcon 9 second stage experiencing an engine failure while the other saw a Falcon 9 first stage land hard on a SpaceX drone ship and then fall off. SpaceX responded quickly to the previous second stage anomaly, allowing the rocket to fly after ensuring that the system involved in the problem was not used on subsequent flights. It's unclear if the same system was involved in the recent Falcon 9 second stage anomaly, as SpaceX has not released further details about the latest upper stage failure. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist and spaceflight expert, wrote about it. This could send the rocket off course and into the Pacific Ocean, further northeast, and into the intended recovery area. Hopefully, the rocket won't be delayed too much longer, as SpaceX is still aiming for a record year of 148 launches, including the last nine crewed launches that SpaceX has now completed a total of 96 launches, including 93 Falcon 9s a Falcon Heavy launch, and two Starships. To reach 148 launches by the end of the year, SpaceX needs to achieve a launch rate of 2.47 days or less. After this delay, the Falcon 9 workhorse will be very busy. While this scenario is optimistic, it would be more realistic to expect a launch delay until November. What do you think about the potential new launch date and the FAA's response? Do you think Starship could launch earlier than expected? Answer yes or no in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date with SpaceX. While the Starship launch date is still uncertain, United Launch Alliance is gearing up for a major milestone with its Vulcan rocket, which is now approaching its second flight. After a successful debut, the Vulcan rocket was delayed several months due to various technical issues. The delay put ULA under a lot of pressure, but with a launch time set for 6 a.m., Eastern Daylight Time on October 4th, the company showed strong resolve and preparation through careful preparation. On September 21st, ULA successfully launched the Vulcan rocket and then placed it on the SLC-41 launch pad on September 30th. Next, ULA conducted a wet suit test, or WDR test, which is a critical step in the final preparations for launch, which culminated in a late-night tank jettison. 
ULA CEO Tori Bruno confirmed the positive results, stating that the download is nearly complete, a good day for WDR. After sharing a video of the process, the company also noted that its team is reviewing all the data to ensure that Volcano is certified and ready to fly. ULA also posted an official tweet confirming the launch time and upcoming deadlines. The second flight is critical for ULA because it launches an inert payload, part of its effort to obtain the launch certificate required to carry military and government payloads under the National Space Security Launch Phase II contract. Vulcan's success on this mission is critical to ULA's future development, especially as the company retires legacy rockets like Atlas and Delta, which have been the backbone of ULA's operations for years. However, prolonged delays on Vulcan have delayed several key missions, including USSF-106 and USSF-87, both scheduled for 2024, and other missions delayed in the next two years. ULA's ability to meet those obligations is now in question. The delays have caused significant setbacks, including a scheduling conflict earlier this year with Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, originally scheduled for April, now pushed back to October. The delays have resulted in sanctions against ULA from the Pentagon, further tightening the company's position on government launch plans. The stakes for ULA are high. The company has more than 20 missions under its NSSL Phase II contract in the coming years but its ability to complete them is uncertain. ULA's market dominance is in doubt. Once the dominant player, ULA is now lagging behind SpaceX, whose fleet of agile rockets has been more successful in meeting growing demand. ULA initially delivered 60% of Phase II launches to SpaceX's 40, but after several delays and additional missions, the ratio has increased to 54 to 46, and SpaceX has closed the gap. The NSSL Phase 3 contract has now begun, with ULA still selected as one of the contractors. However, they will face stiff competition, not only from SpaceX, but also from Blue Origin. If ULA continues to struggle, SpaceX is poised to outpace the scale of mission completions, potentially cementing its leadership in the space launch industry. ULA's internal woes are also compounded by financial difficulties that have led to rumors of a possible sale. Recent speculation has pointed to Sierra Space as a potential buyer, a move that could further complicate Vulcan's future if ULA is acquired. These challenges only add to the pressure surrounding the next Vulcan rocket flight. With so much at stake in the success of this mission, failure is not an option for ULA. This launch could either open a new chapter of success for the company or mark the end of its dominance in the space launch industry. All eyes will be on Vulcan as ULA looks to prove its mettle and remain competitive in a rapidly changing industry. Let's see if ULA can seize this opportunity and secure its place in SpaceX's future exploration. Back to SpaceX, we discuss preparations for the next Falcon 9 mission. Lastly, the European Space Agency, or ESA, revealed that it is preparing for the October 7th launch of its Hara spacecraft, carrying two CubeSats. Attached to the Falcon 9 rocket section, the spacecraft has been fueled and is ready for this important mission. The mission's primary goal is to study the impact crater left by NASA's DART mission, which intentionally collided with the asteroid Dimorphos in 2022, slowing its orbit around the larger asteroid Didymus. The results will help scientists understand how to protect Earth from potentially dangerous asteroid strikes in the future. If all goes according to plan, the Hera spacecraft will reach the asteroid in 2026, when it will begin a six-month mission to observe the crater and collect critical data. Hara's development faces many challenges, including ESA's strategic approach, securing investment, and delays caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite these obstacles, the team is determined to complete the mission, which could make a significant contribution to planetary defense research. As for the launch vehicle, ESA initially planned to use a Soyuz rocket and then switch to Ariane 6, but due to delays with Ariane 6, ESA finally chose SpaceX's Falcon 9 in 2022. This change reflects the development seen with Galileo, satellite systems, and more. Under SpaceX's growing dominance over its European competitors. However, the launch schedule is now uncertain due to SpaceX's temporary suspension of operations following problems with the Crew-9 mission. 
Additionally, the FAA has requested a MISHAP investigation that will make Falcon 9's return to service unpredictable. FAA delays not only impact SpaceX, but also organizations like ESA, wasting valuable time, money, and energy. That's all for today's episode. See you in the next episode.